Right, Jake, we haven't seen you since this summer. I uh, hate to spend too much time talking about that, but I, you know, that was a big fight. I know it didn't go your way. When you look back at it, I mean, tell me what went wrong, what happened? Yeah, I mean, the last fight in Vegas, it was a good experience, um, as all the fights are, especially getting overseas, fighting in a new city. Uh, yeah, what we learned from that was just be ready for anything inside the octagon, I guess. Looking at uh, Kevin Lee's previous fights, we thought, you know, he, he, and we knew he was a wrestler, but we thought he'd want to stay away from my ground game and try and stand up. And then he just started bombarding my legs with double legs, and it was just, yeah, it really threw me off, and I didn't know what was going on. And he took me down once, and I got back up, and I thought, yeah, he'd probably just stand up with me now and then not nah, again he shot again and then he shot again and just yeah so I guess this this time just going in with an open mind I mean we know what what Holbrook's weak uh, sorry strengths are uh, what his weaknesses are but at the same time you expect anything emotionally after that one was that tough for you because like I said it was a big opportunity I mean uh, you know we'd seen you fighting down here you know big name but you know you're brought to the states against another prospect and then it just doesn't go your way was that was that a tough one I mean did it sit tough with you for a little while yeah, I mean, it still, still burns. I mean, all my, all my losses burn, even the one back in Adelaide against James Vick. Um, yeah, still, they still keep me awake at night sometimes, and I just get, you know, because I know I can feel, I can feel if I had have shown up on the day, I could have beaten both of them. And, yeah, so it just burns, and you just lay there at night, and you just catch yourself clenching your fists, and your heart rate jumps up. But, um, I mean, it's in the past now. It's happened. I'm sure I'll fight them, fight them again. Um, and get the win. You want those back someday then? Yeah, absolutely want them back. <laughs> you did, Kevin Lee fought a week ago. Uh, looked fantastic. I mean, when you see him go out and have another win, I mean, do you kind of end up like cheering for those guys in a weird way? Like you want to see him do good because that shows that, you know, they, they're tough guys? Oh, absolutely. I never, I, never wish, I never wish bad on anyone. I mean, um, you know, me and Kevin before, it was a little back and forth before the fight, straight after the fight, we were good. We were talking like we've known each other for a year. I mean, same with me and Johnny Case. I mean, he's here training with me now. So um, I guess that's just, I thought it was just the Aussie way, but it seems it's the American way as well. For sure. So talk about Johnny Case coming down here. Uh, how did that whole thing come about? Because you guys, as you said, ex-opponents, and now, uh, now he's on your side right now. Yeah, I mean, like after the fight, we just, it wasn't any different to any other fight I've had. I mean, you know, I'll shake hands and, and give him a hug and have a chat with him after. And we, we met up with him at the pub afterwards. And yeah, I mean, we have, we have our flights for the UFC. And obviously, all my coaches are here. Everyone's over here. Um, so I was talking to my coaches and I said, why don't we bring Johnny over? And I mean, we, we, we'd talk, spoken a little bit on social media, just, you know, how you going, how's everything been? Um, and I just said to him, I said, do you want to come and check out Melbourne? And he's like, hell yeah, I do. So we organized that, he flew out, and probably the most beneficial thing I've done in my career, I'd say. So that's pretty cool. So first of all, so that's good to know. So when you're, when you're a hometown fighter, the UFC still gives you your flight. So you, so you can take advantage of that if you, if you do it right. Yeah, I mean, like you, can, you might have managers flying over, nutritionists, you might train over there every now and then, have coaches. Um, yeah, but definitely, I mean, that was it's probably the best thing we've done is bring Johnny over and he's just, you know, been a massive help. Um, just he's there when we need when we need him and then he just goes do his own thing when we don't, so it's good. Very nice. Why, why Johnny? I mean, was it something that, it, that you thought he could mimic uh, Holbrook or was it just the fact that you wanted a fresh body, so, you know, a new angle? Why, why Johnny? Uh, even though, you know, I've, I've had two, two losses, even though I won the fight with Johnny, he's still the toughest person I've fought. Um, and he's smart as well. I mean, the, the fights that are lost, I know if I go in and fight 100%, I can win them. With the fight with Johnny, I mean, I, we can fight 10 times and it could go either way each time. Um, yeah, he's just a very smart fighter, very tough. And also, you know, I know he's got a wrestling background. I think myself and Johnny believe that he's wrestling and jiu-jitsu are better than Holbrooks. So um, we can utilize that and he's very good at simulating any style. So he's standing southpaw for me and he's working the wrestling, the takedowns. So, yeah, just make it very specific. So hopefully when I go into the octagon, uh, nothing's going to be a surprise. I'm just going to be used to that sort of movement. Very cool. Your dad still serves as your head coach, huh? Yeah, still. We still see, I, mean, we see, I feel like we're seeing a lot of that lately. You know, Wonder Boy obviously just fought for a title. He does that, you know. Uh, you know, there's a couple other guys that, that are doing it as well. Talk about that relationship. I mean, um, you know, I would think that there's a lot of benefits as well, but maybe there could be some drawbacks that you want some distance from your dad every now and then or what have you. But why is that a relationship that works well for you? Um, yeah, like you see it a lot in sports. Sometimes those, those sort of um, relationships don't really work, but we found a way, a way to make it work. And I think it's, you know, we used to butt heads a lot when I was younger, early in my career. And, um, and then we sort of sat down and we said, you know, you, you need to realize when, when dad's having a go at you when I'm, tra when, I'm, you know, when I'm training and things like that. It's not personal. That's the coach coming out. So we've separated the dad and the coach. I think that's what's made it work. And um, yeah, and I have your dad coaching me. And he's probably the last person that's going to lead you astray. Um, so yeah, no, definitely, definitely good having him around.
Very cool. Talk about the development of your career because you know you're still such a young guy, man, and, and you've you know been tagged as this next level prospect and, and somebody that could you know carry the flag of, of Australian MMA. Has that been difficult for you as as you've grown and developed? Because I feel like there's you know you've been under like an intense kind of uh, looking glass throughout your UFC run. Uh, yeah, no, I mean it's no it's no added pressure there. I. Not that I want to be up out in the, the limelight and getting, you know, be the poster boy for Australian MMA. I just want to lead the way and be a kind of, you know, even though we've got had guys like, um, you know, Sinosik and Parosh and, and um, George Sutteropoulos, they're, they're sort of pioneers. I still think in this new age of MMA, we can still have sort of pioneers, especially the new breed of fighters. Um, like myself, Rob Whitaker, you know, guys, I believe that we, we both have a good shot at, at um, getting towards a title. And yeah, it's just about growing the sport here in, in, in Australia. I think that's why Rob came back. Uh, from over from the States to train in Australia. That's why I've stayed here. Um, yeah, for me, it's just about being a 100% pure bred Australian fighter. And I think that means staying here and training here. Even though it's harder, it's just a way to make it work and show other people that you don't need to go overseas and train. Um, even though it's good, um, you can make it work here. So that means a lot to you, I mean, to really kind of uh, represent the country and represent the nation and be true to the nation as well. It, it means something to you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, like I said, I want to be 100% pure bred Australian race fighter and uh, I think I'm doing that and I think I'm doing well. Very much. Big opportunity. You mentioned Whitaker as well. I mean a big opportunity for you both. I know that this, this card was supposed to have a different main event but once that happened you guys all kind of stepped up a little bit and moved up the, up the, up the schedule a little bit. Is, is it exciting for you to, to be in that slot? Yeah I mean it was a little bit bittersweet at first. I mean I would have liked to see the Rockhold Souza fight right. um, and I was, I, was, I was stoked with being third last fight. I mean that was massive for me so you can imagine how I feel about being on the co-main event. Um, yeah, and getting the call up for that. I mean, just to fight in Melbourne anywhere on the card would be would be an honour. But to be the co-main event um, alongside all, all the other Aussies, it's just um, yeah, this is this is probably the most excited I've been for an event. And um, it's just going to be yeah, a good week. Hopefully, you know, everyone gets the win and we can go celebrate after and just close out the year. Where do you see the career going from here? You know, you pick up a big win. What do you see in 2017? You mentioned, I mean, you, you said it, you, you want the belt. I mean, you're, that's what you're working for. So, I mean, do you feel like you're ready to start making a big charge? Is, are you going to make noise next year? Do you feel like you're still developing as a mixed martial artist? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm more than ready to take on. I mean, I, I've, I think I was ranked 35 at, at, uh, before my last fight, and I knew every single name um, that was ranked above me. So there's not going to be any easy fights. And I look at some of these guys, and I just I feel that I could, I could get the better of them and, and beat them. Um, you're not saying that... I could go and take the belt right now. I believe I have the skills, but a lot of it's mental and getting experience. I mean, a lot of the guys in the UFC have twice or three times as many fights as I do. So, yeah, I mean, people keep reminding me that it's not a, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon, and I've got a long time in this sport. And I think um, if I want to have longevity in this sport, to not, not play it safe, but play it smart is the way to go. Definitely. Well, when you play this one out in your head on Saturday night, how do you see it unfolding and how, how do you get your hand raised? Yeah, so, so this Sunday, I'm, I definitely, oh, I know I'm going to win this fight. I mean, I can't lose in Melbourne. I've never lost in Melbourne before. And um, yeah, I, I think using my speed and explosiveness, definitely going to shock Andrew. I don't think he's, he's fought anyone that's as fast as I am. And, and you know, he's a, he's a pretty big lightweight. Uh, I'm bigger, so I don't think he's used to fighting people that are as strong as him either. Um, so I think I can shut down his, his wrestling, keep it on the feet. And, you know, the ultimate would be to get a first round knockout.